was approached by um, a publishing company to do the, the original record of all banjo tunes and uh, it took me kind of forever to come around to it. Is original. I composed it over, uh, over over a period of a year. Just most of it, just jamming on my back porch and coming up with ideas. The way I started playing music, I started with classical guitar when I was about 10 years old, and it was uh, uh, it happened because of my older brother Vladimir, who loved music. And right before he got drafted to go to uh, serve in the army, he convinced my parents to put me into the music program. So uh, they took me to music school number one in uh, Obninsk, Russia. I was still part of the Soviet Union when I was growing up. And uh, that's where I met my guitar teacher, Alexei Gvozdev. Alexei was a huge bluegrass enthusiast. And uh, at that point, he already had a bluegrass band going. So the first time I heard banjo was played by one of his students. And he was playing Cumberland Gap by Earl Scruggs. And I was blown away and I immediately asked my teacher, I have to learn this. And two weeks later I was performing and I was completely consumed by bluegrass. I was growing up in, you know, basically in the Soviet Union before it collapsed. Uh, that was the year 1988, I believe. Bluegrass music was extremely hard to find. Uh, but there were a couple of people in Moscow who were huge bluegrass fans that started coming to the United States, traveling back, bringing VHS tapes vinyl, you know, records, cassette tapes, um, and uh, tablature, the sheet music that was essential to learn how to play the style. So a copy of the tablature of Earl Scruggs' songs uh, was uh, somehow made it to uh, this huge library in Moscow named after Vladimir Lenin. And our teacher had to go there, travel three hours away with a camera would actually have to take a, uh, make a photocopy, develop it back in Obninsk, and that's what we used to learn. Banjo picks, you couldn't find those. So what I would do, uh, well, actually my teacher found this way, he would, for a thumb pick, he would use a plastic ruler and uh, he would uh, put it in, in a boiling water to make it bandable. And then with special tool, kind of put it around my thumb and get the curve just right to where it would fit, fit my thumb. And then we would use nail file just to just file it and file it till it was uh, the right amount of edge on it. Now these, uh, these metal picks, we would actually cut them from canned food. Uh, and I uh, kid you not, and they were terrible, and, uh, <laughs> but they got the job done. The very first time uh, I came to the United States was in 1992, and I was 14 years old. You know, a person that I met on that trip that had a profound impact, this guy's name is Ray Hughes, and Ray gave me my first banjo. Up until that point, I was using my teacher's banjos. Uh, Ray Hughes uh, just liked what I was doing, and before the trip was over, he brought out this banjo and said, try this, and I did, and he said, what do you think? I said, I love it. And he said, it's yours. And, uh, you know, from, I think from that moment, you know, I had this special kinship with America and the people of the United States.
got to really praise these incredible Nashville musicians that uh, were a part of my record because they really elevated, uh, I feel like, the whole record. I, I was telling somebody that uh, when, I f when I heard Jerry Douglas playing on my tune in the headphones for the first time, I almost got teary-eyed him just taking a swing at the solo and just really dig into what was going on uh, to what I wrote. I mean, that had a big impact on me.